Sprite is a colorless, lemon and lime flavored soft drink created by the Coca-Cola Company. It was originally developed in West Germany in 1959 as Fanta Klar Zitron, or Clear Lemon Fanta, and was introduced in the United States under the brand name Sprite in 1961 as a competitor to 7up. A catchy jingle for a 1979 Sprite commercial exclaimed, When you're reaching for more, reach for Sprite. We at Typewriter Minutes recently came across a Sprite that had us reaching for more. This is Lily from Typewriter Minutes. Today we are going to do a Royal Sprite. Thank you, Lily. So this is a Royal Sprite made by Silver Seiko. We've done a review of a Royal Mercury, also made by Silver Seiko. And as far as I could tell, on the inside, they're basically the same machine. This one, we'll, we'll put it up next to, um, not a Royal Mercury, but a Royal Mustang, which is the same, exact same as a Royal Mercury, only a different color. And you'll see that the plastic body that they put on this, both here and this cover, just make the typewriter look larger quite a bit larger than the Royal Mercury or Royal Mustang. But again, it looks to be just the same thing. It's just they've really bulked up the plastic on this. You'll see in a few minutes, the case is also very large and rectangular and blockish, as opposed to the Royal Mercury case, which is a little bit angular. So they made this to be kind of bold and blocky and as you can see, it has these cool red platen knobs on it, just to give it a little bit of pop. So you got the red knobs, red selector switch there for the uh, ribbon selector, and then touch control over here. Just a really cool looking machine. Generally, I prefer typewriters that have plastic, oh, I'm sorry, with uh, metal bodies, but I have to say this has been uh, survive the age as well because there's not a scratch on it that's the I guess the upside to plastic typewriters is that they can crack if you drop off if you drop them that's the downside but the upside is that they don't really get paint chips as long as they're taken care of they look like they're factory fresh so the one thing that we did have to do to this we did take it all apart cleaned it um, the keys and this happens on lots of typewriters but Silver Seiko's in particular tend to get some yellowish looking keys and I retro brighted them with hydrogen peroxide so most of them came back to gray there's a couple of them here just couldn't get them to come all the way back and so they actually look like kind of yellowish whitish keys so Colby Jack I guess to go with your Royal Sprite so that's the the body of the machine We'll go around one more time here, and then I'll start to show you some of the features. Okay, so over here, like I mentioned, this is the touch control. You got heavy and light, and you can feel a slight difference between the two. Light gives it a little lighter touch, H a little heavier touch, and probably a little snappier. Got your standard margin release, shift. Shift is a, a carriage shift, but it, given that it's a relatively small machine, it's still fairly light for the pinkies. Got the standard uh, shift lock over here. You got black, red, and stencil, again, with the little red uh, color selector. And one thing I've noticed about uh, Royal Mercury's or Silver Seiko um, Mercury's and Mustangs and Silver Seiko's like this Royal Sprite is that the keys are kind of tilted up a little bit. I'm not sure why that is. There's kind of a universal bar at the top here. I don't know if that's because of the, 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 the geometry of the design when they do that, that they have to be tilted back like that. But every Silver Seiko that I've seen has keys that are just tilted a little bit. And it's a little bit funky on this one because because of this big blocky ribbon cover this comes right up to the edge of the keys uh, as opposed to the Royal Mercury that's a little more streamlined it's just I don't know if it's a design flaw but it's just a little bit of a quirk here that this big blocky ribbon cover butts up almost right against the keys so it just it creates some interesting touch typing 
Over, around, uh, over on this side, get the red platinum knob. You got the single carriage release lever. Nice little bell. Got the paper release lever right here. So if you put the paper in crooked, just flip it up, scoot your paper and put it back in. It has push and slide uh, margins for left and right. It's kind of a simple bulletproof design. This little bar right here that covers the back of the carriage is actually metal. So you got metal here, plastic ribbon cover, plastic base. But interestingly, they chose uh, a little metal bar right here. These are super easy to get out for cleaning and maintenance because two screws to take this back bar off. And then uh, once, well, I'll show you the features and then we'll show you how easy it is to get off because there's just a couple screws on the inside and then the screws that hold the feet in and it, the inside just pops right out. So Eli, if you'll come over to the top here and get a little closer, there you go. You can see the line space selector. You got single space, two spaces, and then there's a zero at the bottom. If you go all the way that way, that releases the platen so that you can, uh, releases the clicks and you can type wherever you want. And then there's a little red dot if you go all the way that way. That is the carriage lock. So if you put it all the way in the red dot and center it, then you're locked and good to put it in the case. Uh, it's got a little lift up paper bale with a little, little thingy to, to grab there. It's kind of a nice little touch. There's no paper bale rollers. It's just a flat uh, paper bale bar here in the middle. And then I'll go ahead and lift this off now. This is the ribbon cover. It's got the two posts, one here, one there. And those posts go into these little rubber grommets here on the side, one on the left and one on the right. I'll take the camera real quick. And here in the tight basket, you can see it's got uh, little forks right there. That's the ribbon reverse system, so you have to have Eyelets in the ribbon um, for the ribbon reverse to work. It's got a little scale right down here, and you'll see the little triangle right there. If you want, you can stick a pencil or a ballpoint pin in that little hole, and then you can either do horizontal lines, or if you spin, then you got a vertical line. So that's kind of a neat little touch. Here's the screws I mentioned. This screw right here. Uh, the only thing that holds in is this piece. This little front corner piece is its own piece, and that comes right out when you take that screw out. Same thing over here. That screw, take that out, and then this piece comes out. And then the only other screws holding it in, pass this back to Eli. Tip this back. There are the screws on the bottom. So you got uh, screws inside the original feet. Thank goodness the feet are still in good shape. Is, uh, they're a little bit unusual design and it would have been a little bit harder to find a replacement for them, but they're still nice and squishy. But those screws right there are the only thing that holds really the, the, the base uh, of the typewriter to the frame. And then in between the frame and the base, there's some little rubber grommets on the inside. Uh, so that it rests not on the plastic, but on the, the metal, uh, metal grommets or washers. So we'll, oh, something else to point out. This is something that you don't see. You'll zoom in a little bit, Eli. On the Royal Mercury's and the Royal Mustang, there's a little thing that sticks up right here on the top of the segment. And I think the only purpose of that is to, I'll show you when I put the, ribbon cover on, I think it's to just support this so that you don't accidentally push this down and snap it. So the these just kind of rest on those little posts that have a flat top, kind of an interesting design. So we'll go ahead and put, I think we've covered everything on the inside. Go ahead and put these back on. And then we'll show you how this machine compares in size to the Royal Mustang and Royal Mercury.
Okay, here's a Royal Sprite, and here is a Royal Mustang, again made by Silver Seiko. Exact same thing as the Royal Mercury besides the color. This one's kind of a lime green. Um, this one just looks and feels bulkier just because of the solid angles. And again, this ribbon cover, you'll notice from the side, it just comes right up next to the keys. Whereas on the Royal Mercury and the Royal Mustang, this angles back. So you're, when you type on the top row, your, your knuckles don't hit this. Whereas on this one, they kind of do. So just an interesting design on that. So a little bit larger in size, but it just feels larger because of the, the way the, the case is angled. And then we'll show you the cases here in just a sec. The Royal Sprite case is larger and blockier than the one for the Mustang and the, and the Mercury. Okay, here's the case covers. The Royal Sprite is just a rectangular blue. With, it's got this ribbed plastic here. Doesn't appear to serve any purpose other than design. And you'll notice the Royal Mustang is angled again to match the angle of the ribbon cover. This one's just blocky. And it's got basically the same handles you see on a Royal Mercury, same latching system, just a little bigger. And I don't know, for some reason it just seems more substantial even though they're about the same weight. I guess just because of the, the angles. So to put the case on, I'll bring the machine back over here. First, you put it in you know, put it in the lock mode so that your carriage is centered. And then the thing I like about Royal uh, or Silver Seiko cases that are plastic in the back, they don't have the little posts, plastic posts like the the brothers do that stick up. The the brother posts have some of them have snapped off over the years because they go into the back of the typewriter and people don't take it off properly and it snaps. This just has this slim little bar right here that kind of fits in this groove so to put it on you just bring this over the top of the case bring it forward and then here it snap in and you're good to go so pretty convenient uh let's you don't have to worry about the zippers or the zipper fabric tearing. The original plastic cases have held up well as long as you don't drop them. So there's the Royal Sprite and its case. And now we'll do the type test. All right, thank you, Eli. Two things I forgot. This one was made in 1971, according to the typewriter database. And then something that you see on just about every Silver Seiko is the little pop-up paper support. If you'll zoom in, you'll see this little, little hump sticking up. All you do is push it and up it comes. The brother typewriters, some of them had paper supports, but as they got uh, later in models, they got cheaper and got rid of it. So that's one thing I like about the Silver Seiko is that it always has the paper support. So we'll put that up. I use two sheets of paper um, the Royal um, Sprites, like the other Silver Psychos, Royal Mercuries. The Platin is a little bit hard, not as soft as on a brother. So it's always good to have two pieces of paper in. Straighten it up. Okay. We'll do a line on black first. There's the, the bell and there's a line lock when you get to the end. It doesn't let you type over the last letter and then you got to do a margin release to type into the margin. Something else I noticed, just because of the design of the base, this is seems a little bit higher. And if you have big fat thumbs like mine, your thumb 
can have a tendency to hit the front frame. So just a little bit of a quirk. And again, if I were to do touch typing and hit the top row of keys, I can feel my knuckles hitting this front of the ribbon cover. Now I do a line on red. Oops. One thing I like about the Royals that are made by Silver Seikos as, as opposed to the Royal Quiet Deluxes and some other Royals that were actually made by Royal is that this one does not skip. The, the Royals that are made by Royals from the mid 50s to me always have a tendency to skip, which is annoying. These like the brothers just work, never, never has a skip, which is kind of nice. All right. I'll pass this back and I'll show the typeface there. Again, I just had this thing apart, clean the slugs, clean out the inside so everything's nice and even. I align the uppercase and lowercase letters. So the typing's pretty snappy. It's just a, it feels a little bit different because of the way those keys are angled back. But it's super solid, doesn't skip. So very reliable. We'll finish up this review with some pros and cons. First the pros. The spiffy colors including the red platen knobs, the angular design, it's reliable, it's easy to take apart for cleaning, the groovy carrying case with ribbed plastic, has paper support and touch control, it has the original feet and other rubber parts still in good shape, and the plastic body looks like new. And then for cons, I put plastic body as both a pro and a con, just depending on whether you like plastic or not. Um, plastic is actually held up very well. No paint chips since it's just solid plastic all the way through. The, you don't get missing paint like you do on a metal body machine. So that's a pro or a con, depending on your preferences. The Platin's a little bit hard compared to brother JP1's of the same era, but if you use two pieces of paper, still works just fine. The Colby Jack keys, you know, we gave it about a day out in bright sunlight and they didn't come back. I don't think they're coming back. So we're just gonna embrace it and enjoy the Colby Jack with our Sprite. And the ribbon cover that's close to the top rows of keys, if you're a touch typist, that just feels really funny having those right there. So that would be a con. Uh, fat thumbs might hit the frame down by the space bar. Again, depending on where you normally hit the space bar with your thumb may not be an issue for you. And there's no sound installation in this machine. So it's a little bit loud and clanky. That's kind of typical for the Japanese typewriters from the 60s and the 70s. You can add insulation to make them quieter, but nah. There's no tabulator on this machine. Usually the ultra portables don't have a tabulator, but a few of them do. Like the Brother Webster XL500 has a tabulator with built-in tabs every 10 spaces. This one does not have a tabulator. And uh, Eli came up with the last one, no ability to do a Google search. So you have to use your laptop or your smartphone for that. So those are the pros and cons of this Royal Sprite from 1971. Thank you for joining us for Typewriter Minutes. Be sure to share, link, like, and subscribe.